Hello everybody and welcome to another video and today we're going to be looking at a band called Lang. Um, now I'm not sure if I pronounced that correctly, uh, the band is from Taiwan so there's a huge chance I have pronounced that horribly wrong. Uh, anyway, um, I'm just going to go with Lang because that's how it's spelled. <coughs> I did a little bit of um, a search about information for them, didn't really come up with very very much. Um, but what I have found is this. Um, Lung are a solo terror black metal project from Keelung City in Taiwan, formed in 2018. Uh, the name of this project, Lung, means cold in Chinese, apparently. That's what the information I found says. Whether or not that's accurate, I don't know. Um, now, I said a second ago that it's a solo terror black metal project. Now, terror black metal is a descriptor I've never heard attached to black metal before, so I'm intrigued to check that out. But it also said it was a solo project. Now, at the time of writing of this song that we're going to be checking out, I understand it was still a solo project. But um, from what I understand now, uh, there are two additional members that have been added to the band. Uh, so that's what I understand I could be mistaken because when when I looked up the band it does list three members um, now a bit more information on the band it says the sole member of this project was allegedly shot during a carjacking gone wrong nearly a year ago now I'm assuming they're meaning in 2017 I'm guessing that this um, descriptor was written description was written around 2018 when the band was formed so I'm guessing he was um, alleg allegedly shot in 2017. Anyway, he has claimed that the songs he wrote for this project were inspired by his experience while hospitalized and in a coma as a result of the attack. He described his comatose state as being in a place beyond hell. Now we're going to be looking at a track. I'm not going to try and pronounce the name of the track. Again, it's in Chinese. Uh, but the translation I've managed to find for it, well, I say I managed to find for it, I put the title through Google Translate and it came back with My Floating Body. Um, there were lyrics for the song underneath the video on YouTube. Um, I couldn't find any translation for them, so I've basically copy pasted them into Google Translate to try and get a uh, translation of the lyrics so these the lyrics that I have might not be an entirely accurate translation I just wanted to get a rough idea as to what the song itself was about although given the name of the song and what we've just read about him being in a coma and something like that it could be something to do with that anyway so just so we're on, on the understanding that the lyrics that I have might not be accurate, I just wanted to, them to give me a rough idea as to the meaning of the song. Anyway, this should be interesting. Like I said, I've never heard of the descriptor terror black metal before, and as we all know from watching any of my previous videos, I do have some very, very mixed opinions when it comes to black metal. So, this should be interesting. So, let's uh, jump into it and see what we have. So, my floating body by Lung. Let's have a look. Very mellow so far. There it is.
Do you know what? I really loved that. That was fantastic. That was phenomenal. Now, I don't very often get excited by black metal, as many of you will know if you've ever watched um, previous videos of mine. It's, it's not very often I get excited by black metal, but that was just brilliant. And I'm really hoping that this translation of the lyrics I have is fairly accurate, because if it is, it is an incredibly beautiful song as well. Um, I mean, it's obviously a bit sort of grim, but it is just beautifully written. And the performance there was fantastic. You know, it opened with that really beautiful, melodic sort of quiet piano bit at the beginning. It was beautiful. And then it broke into the heavier elements of the song. And again, it just sounded really good. It was like very, it was like melodic black metal, essentially, although he calls it terror black metal. And... You know, he's singing about this experience. You know, the, the way I've read this song, he seems to be talking about what it felt like to be in that comatose state, like I mentioned at the beginning. Um, you know, sort of a sort of place between life and death, although in this song he's referring to himself as a dead body. Um, and the, the track being called My Floating Body, you know, etc. Uh, but I, I, I absolutely love this. You know, and I really hope this translation is at least fairly accurate because if it, like I said, if it is, it is a beautifully written song. So the translation I have, again, might not be accurate. I'm just putting it out there. So there we go. Excuse me. The song goes: Cataclysm, storm, rise and f oh, my, my. Cataclysm storm, rise and fall on the ocean. When I inhale, the storm blew up. I exhale, I was blown up. The storm of my own creation leads me into the grave. I was gently put into the sea where my corpse floats. And then it goes into the chorus. I'm going to call it the chorus because it is repeated about three or four times throughout the track. It goes... My, the sea flooded my lungs, my eyes are blind, confused by the wild waves. I released my spirit to the sea, in these waves, my body rested in peace. The trend takes me home, my body is floating on this miserable ocean. So he's, bas he's basically describing, like, he's, he's laying there floating on the ocean, just being carried along by the tide. So it's like, you know... It, uh, I suppose, in the essence, it's like being in that sort of comatose state, you know. It's, it's basically a big, vast emptiness, you know. Or, I, I, don't, I don't know what it's like to be in a coma, but this is what I'm assuming it's like. I think this is how he's trying to describe it. I mean, this might not even be necessarily directly about that experience, but it's it sort of comes across that way to me, you know. He's sort of floating along in this big, vast emptiness, you know, not know, you know, basically basically feeling like he's dead, you know, he's just this discarded body just floating along in the ocean. Um, I, I love the way this is written. Anyway, it carries on. My corpse floats gently, dry and barren. The dark hand reached out to me, grabbed the remains of my corpse. My blood has stained the ocean and the clean water has gone bad, poisoned by death, poisoned by my death. And again, into that chorus, the sea flooded my lungs, my eyes are blind, confused by the wild waves, I released my spirit to the sea. In these waves, my body rested in peace, the trend takes me home, my body is floating on this miserable ocean. The ocean is where the body sinks deep into the abyss, with the release of the last moment of life sinking deeper. The body will sink forever, but I am floating on this ocean, unable to sink deep, neither life nor death, I float. And that bit there, that, that last line there, makes me think that he's talking about, you know, this sort of... I can't think of the word I'm looking you know, this sort of sp limbo between life and death, you know, he, he's not alive, but he's not dead either, he's just sort of in this comatose state, if you will, you know, he says, you know, unable to sink deep, neither life nor death, I float, so he's just sort of hovering somewhere in between the two, and, you know, he, he's in this vast wide open space of the ocean, 
and he's completely alone, you know. And he he, he he wants it to go either way, you know. Either let me die or bring me back to life so I can, you know, be around the people that I love and care for. You know, I, I, I really love the way this song is written. It is so beautiful. And then it goes back into that chorus again. The sea flooded my lungs. My eyes are blind. Confused by the wild waves, I released my spirit to the sea. In these waves, my body rested in peace. The trend takes me home. My body is floating on this miserable ocean. And then he repeats that again. And, you know, it's to me, that is a beautifully written song. If that translation is in any way accurate, I think it is beautifully written. You know, I... Even if it's not, what I've just read there sounds amazing. You know, even if it's even slightly close to what he said, it's, it is beautiful. And, you know, the way the song was performed, I mean, you could almost hear the sort of pain and anguish in his voice as he was singing that. And again, you know, the music was amazing. I, I really love that track. You know, it's very unlikely to get this excited over black metal. I really, really loved that song. It was phenomenal. I really liked that. I, I, I want to hear some more by this artist because that was that was unbelievable. I really liked that, but I can't really think of much else to say about that. So I'm going to leave that as it is. And now, if anybody likes to suggest a track for me to react to, then please do so. By all means, you can drop a comment in the comment section below, or message me on my Facebook or my Instagram, or even message me through my Patreon, where you could also help to support this channel, which would be of great help to me. Uh, there is an option in uh, Patreon where you can get your suggestion jumped to the front of the queue, should you so desire. Um, there are a couple of limitations on that, and uh, that's just to be fair to people who suggest tracks through uh, regular means, but you know, the option is there should you desire it. Um, if you do suggest a track through regular means, uh, i.e. YouTube comments, Facebook messages, etc., uh, it might take me a while to get around to your suggestion, um, since I do get suggested so many tracks every single day that my list grows faster than I can record the videos. But I do write down every suggestion I get, so I will get around to it eventually. It just might take me a while to get to it. Also, Metalhead Reacts is a proud supporter of the Sophie Lancaster Foundation, a British-based charity whose main goal is to put an end to hate crimes, mainly those involving people of the alternative culture. Um, obviously, they would, they would like to put an end to all hate crimes, but the attacks on people of the alternative culture is where their main f main focus is, because that's that's how the foundation came into being, and it's something I believe in very strongly. Something I. I've supported from the moment I heard about it because it's something I myself have been through it's something many of my friends have been through you know even you know members of my family have been through it and it's something that gets widely ignored but it's a very real problem and something needs to be done and this is the fact that people from the alternative community are getting violently attacked just purely for the fact that they are part of the alternative community you know just because of the music they listen to or the clothes that they wear it's a very real problem and I'm not talking about like small petty little things like getting insults shouted at you or getting shoulder rammed as you walk down the street I'm talking about very real very violent crimes where people are getting hospitalized with like broken limbs and sometimes even more severe and life-threatening injuries and this is something that's been it's been going on for decades and it's something that still continues now but nothing ever gets mentioned about it. You know, we hear all these other hate crimes on a daily basis like sexism, racism, homophobia, transphobia, religious hatred. We hear these every single day from the most heinous and violent of crimes where someone is killed because of the colour of their skin, their religious beliefs, their sexual identity, whatever, down to the most petty and pathetic of these crimes where some entitled white woman is calling the police because a family of colour are having a picnic in a public space. You know, we hear every facet of all of those different crimes on, on an almost daily basis in every news media you can possibly imagine. But we never hear about these people that are getting violently attacked because of their taste in music. You know, the last time we heard any widespread coverage of this was 13 years ago, when Sophie Lancaster and her boyfriend Rob Maltby were violently attacked by a group of five or six people and beaten, kicked and punched so severely that they both ended up in a coma. Now, Rob Maltby, he did thankfully survive. He was in a coma for around about a week, maybe a bit longer, I can't remember exactly how long it was, but he thankfully survived. Sophie Lancaster, on the other hand, was in a coma for 13 days before she succumbed to injuries and she 
died. This young woman was 20 years old and she was beaten to death just purely for the fact that she listened to alternative music and wore alternative fashion. You know, and this happened 13 years ago. This is the last time there was any widespread coverage of something like this happening. But I know for a fact that similar attacks have happened since uh, that time. Sorry, my throat really dried out there. You know, in, in the last 13 years, since that attack on Sophie Lancaster, I know there have been multiple other attacks of a similar fashion, but we've not heard a single thing about them. Maybe because no one died. And if that's the case, that is unacceptable. We shouldn't have to wait for someone to die before we talk about this. You know, we shouldn't have to wait for someone to get beaten to death before we actually acknowledge that there is an actual problem. Because, you know, this, this, is, this happens all the time. I've, I've been attacked and beaten to within an inch of my life on several occasions. You know, from from the age of 11 up until now, I've been attacked multiple times just because of my taste in music and the way that I dress. You know, members of my family, my older brother was beaten with a baseball bat because he was a metaler. Well, because he is a metaler, should I say. You know, my sister has even been, you know, verbally assaulted, and I believe she was physically assaulted at one point because they believed that she was metal and she's not. They've just looked at her, gone, she dresses like a metaler. She must be a metaler, and therefore it's okay for us to attack her. And you know, it's not acceptable. You know, what it what is I I don't understand the trigger point here. You know, what why is someone's taste in music an excuse to attack them? It makes no sense. You know. But the point of the fact is that this has been going on for a long, long time. But nothing's getting done about it. Nothing's getting said about it. It's just being ignored. And by ignoring it, we're essentially letting them get away with it. You know, and we're talking, you know, quite severe injuries. I mean, a couple of years ago, there was this young lass in uh, Glasgow in Scotland who was throwing a charity gig. And during the night, she had to go back to her own place because no, I think she, like, her boots or something broke and she had to go back to her place and change. And her place was five minutes away from the venue that she was throwing this charity gig at. And in the time between leaving the venue and getting to her house, she was attacked twice by the same group of people. And they punched her, kicked her, knocked her to the ground and brutally attacked her twice. And the only reason why things didn't get out of hand and when I say didn't get out of hand I mean the reason she didn't die is because a passing taxi driver put a stop to it but even then once the group of attackers had dissipated and moved on the taxi driver didn't actually check on her to see if she was okay he just buggered off you know and this happened you know in a five minute space of time between her leaving the venue and getting to her apartment. Where was that in the news? Why didn't we hear anything about this? You know, this was a brutal and violent crime of a single lone young woman being attacked by a group of people because of the way that she dressed, because of the music that she listened to. Why did we not hear anything about this? It is unacceptable that this gets ignored. We can't allow what happened to Sophie Lancaster to ever happen again. It's something that should never have happened in the first place. And this is what the Sophie Lancaster Foundation is all about. They want to put a stop to this sort of thing happening. They want to bring more awareness to the fact that this sort of thing is happening so that people, you know, can actively put a stop to it. You know, people realise, you know, make people realise that this sort of thing is happening all the time and people are getting severely injured you know we can't let the people that are perpetrating these crimes get away with it but by not talking about it by just ignoring it that's what we're doing we're just saying you know carry on beat up whoever the hell you want just because they wear different clothes to you and listen to different music to you it's it, it it's something that's always boggled my mind why this is such a trigger point for people you know you don't attack people because they like different tv shows to you 
You don't attack people because they like different movies to you. So why do you attack someone because they like different music to you? It makes no sense. And, you know, like I said, this has been going on for decades. And nothing's being done. And that is something that needs to change. So if you'd like to find out more about the Sophie Lancaster Foundation, there is a link to their website in the description below. You can pop over there, find out what they're working on at the moment, find out what their main goal is, because they can explain it a lot better than I can. Um, and if you can help them out in any small way, obviously don't feel obligated to do so. But if you can help them out in any small way, uh, whether it's a small donation through their website or something as simple as one of these Sophie wristbands you can get from their online web store, there's that one as well. You know, the smallest amount can make the biggest difference. And... The sooner we bring more attention to this, the sooner we get more people talking about this, the sooner we can try to put an end to all of this violence, and the sooner we can help to stamp out prejudice, hatred, and intolerance everywhere. But, I'm going to leave that as it is for the time being. Thank you all very, very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.